Corona. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Irving Ethan Wilder III. So I'm happy to say Mark Ethan Wilder III in class of 2020. I'd like to thank each and, and every one of you who contributed to this big news for you today. My teachers, administrators, principals, vice principals, and staff members, okay, guys, you pull over. thank you for not over. making our four years of high school easy, but you made it hard. It's not that difficult to we wouldn't be the people capable of not just this accomplishment, but for whatever life will throw us in the future. I'd also like to thank every one of our parents and first of all supporters who believed in us when we didn't even believe in ourselves, who weathered the storm of teenage emotions and attitudes, and even our bad haircuts. We honestly and truly appreciate it all. We thank you, and we love you. And finally, I'd like to congratulate the St. Mark Devil Secondary School and graduating class of 2020 for such a unique accomplishment that we have accomplished with no other class can say they have in their final year. So congratulations, family. Now, finding the ways to make this was difficult, to say the least. A lot was worth in my mind. What if I forget a word? You know, my wife I could cut out. I could start speaking French randomly. I could fart on camera. So I de-stressed. But I remember the words of our famous school philosopher, Mr. Chambers. He would say, get to class. Now, although the majority of grade nine for some of us was spent being chased by the same philosopher, we were all a part of many important and diverse things. Some were finding their place in jam night. Some actually took drama class seriously and were a part of the drama productions. And although we were a part of these amazing things, Grade 9 was a year of uncertainty for all of us. We scrambled to find friends in the Get Ready program. We barely knew what floor room 222 was on. And we all knew we probably shouldn't be seen going to the CAF. Because you know, you know, someone was going to ask you for some bread. Fast forward a year, and we get to grade 10. Well, honestly, who remembers grade 10? Grade 10 went by in a blur, but they say time flies when you're having fun. And we did. By then, we were all a bit more comfortable. Our golf shirts probably weren't as wet as they were before. And we probably couldn't find our gym shirts anymore, but we had a great time. At that time, we had to help them all in fair. And there was a whole audience to watch competitive activities. Or probably that time when the boys' basketball team won championships, and the crowd was crazy. The Bible School gave off was infection, and we all had a part of that one. Or maybe the less talked about moments, like the year before, when the boys' volleyball team was undefeated and won championships too. N not even mad. But grade 10 was the year we were all maturing a lot more than we'd hoped. Some were nervous about their late grade applications, I mean, <coughs> Panther Pack applications. And others were speaking to flourish in the people that are sitting in front of their iPhones right now. I, I hope you're not using Android. <laughs> what do you face the line? First world problems, but grade 11 hits. And everyone starts going their separate ways. Maybe that meant taking courses for post-secondary applications, or pursuing their passion, or maybe just trying to figure out what that passion was. Grade 11 was the year for them. And for those of you in Panther Pack, we were able to share moments and memories that truly will be remembered for the rest of our lives. As a class, and as a family, we all knew that our mindset had changed, and yet again, we had to adjust to the challenges ahead. Because you know, grades always going to be a year, right? And it was. So it is. Because grade 12 came, and each and every one of you was faced with undeniable mountains. For some, that was the animal and his amazing, amazing schemes and tropes. But still, you overcame. For some, you were tasked with a balancing act of a part-time job in school, but you still made time for friends and family. And for some of you, grade 12 stood here, and you were tasked with a weighted vest of depression, loneliness, and even a bit of heartache. But look at you. You still found the strength to overcome and pass every class and succeed in every way possible. And that was just first semester. Because second semester of grade 12 came, and we all thought we'd be getting a normal graduation, a normal prom, and a normal ash trip. 
I want my money back. We just wanted a normal life, but we're not a normal class. Deep down, we all knew we were different. So growing up comes fast. We plan for after high school. We apply to universities, colleges, sports programs, or maybe we just take a year to breathe. And then March comes, and so does Rona. We all thought we'd be back to school in three weeks, but as four, five, and six weeks roll by, we each realized that this is how it's going to have to be. But quarantine couldn't stop us because guess what? We had midterms, and the teachers gave us more work than we could handle. We had to adapt, and we learned to do so, so we created our own motivation. We found our own guidance, and we became our own inspirations. If there's anything we learned, is that we, ourselves, are capable of rising to any challenge we are faced with. We made academic magic out of this quarantine. Whether you had a sleep schedule or don't even know what that word means anymore, you've done it. Many things have happened during this quarantine. I would be remiss if I didn't use this opportunity to highlight the advancement and the beauty coming from the Black Lives Matter protests. Because black lives do matter. I'm sure a lot of you believe the statement to be a, a true one. But to others, it is not. Injustice, discrimination, racism, this is something we are born with. It is something we are taught. So I pray when we grow up and have kids, remember these things from your youth. Remember that my skin is not a weapon. Remember that to have my skin is, yes, painful at times. But I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. For me, this would you. For your children. For your children's children. I say this because as much change as we hope to see, it will not be given to our generation by the ones before us or the ones after. We are the change we are looking for. Each and every one of you have proved that you are capable of the change necessary for, each and, for what each and every one of us deserves. Whatever race, background, ethnicity, or sexual orientation you are, we all deserve to be treated with equality, fairness, and respect. We all deserve a world where our kids won't have to duck their heads when the police drive by. A world where we can all be and become who and what we want with an equal chance of doing so. We need change, and the potential for tremendous changes in this class. You have proved this with this very accomplishment. But we will have many more accomplishments, and they will be just as great if not greater. But soon this moment of graduation will just be a memory. And you may ask what's next. You may wonder if you can have yet another great accomplishment as this, and you will. But the question we must truly ask ourselves is, will it matter? Is a life so filled of success, truly successful, if we are left without love? Is our world truly beautiful if everyone in it doesn't have things like food or water. When you think about yourself, is your success truly measured only in a diploma or a six-figure income? Can that be all there is to success? This beautiful place that was made by God, this home of the earth. You see, astronauts get the unique opportunity to explore outside of it. But to us down here, our world is so large big and important and grand to us. We celebrate things like basketball games, birthdays, reading books with error points, and graduations. And we believe these things to be so grand and so breathtaking. But in space, millions of light years away, Earth is seen as just a pale blue dot. And on it, on this pale blue dot lived every teacher ever, every student, every professor, every parent, and every child. On it lived every king and queen, and on it lived every peasant. But I say this to say, our world, when you think about it, it is so grand and filled with possibility. You can be the richest person alive, and I'm sure one of you will. Or you can live and work what some call an average job. But fast forward a hundred years, and we are all gone. All your money won't matter, because you will not see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Your clean Travis Scott ones won't count for anything. Your high school diploma, believe it or not, will fade. And let's be honest, you're gonna go bald. But 
none of it will matter. Nothing except the love and happiness you share with those around you and the ones you love. Quality time with your family, telling your parents and future children that you love them. Fun times and safe times with your friends. Don't be judged. What will you leave behind for your children? For your children's children? Or even your children's children's children? This life can be more than just a good paying job. It can be a rewarding one. It has to be more than just acquiring a diploma or what good we do with it. So I will leave you with this. We will all one day leave this pale blue dot. You will be successful with a great house and a nice job and three jobs not once. I'm sure you will. When it's all said and done, and God allows you to rest until he comes, what will truly matter? What will become the life you've lived? What will your legacy be when you have to leave this pale blue dot? Thank you. And once again, congratulations to us, the family of 2020. May God bless you all.